letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6. Ephesians, chapter 6, we'll be reading the first nine verses, and this will be our scripture background reading as we look at the Heidelberg Catechism, Lord's Day 39, uh, looking at the implications of the fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother. Ephesians 6, starting at verse 1. And hear now the word of God, as penned by the Apostle Paul. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And you masters do the same things to them, giving up threatening knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. Our hymn of preparation is number 240. We rise to sing the four stanzas. Please also turn with me in the back of the Psalter hymnal to page 52, page 52, as we look this afternoon at Lord's Day 39 of the Heidelberg Catechism. Page 52 in the back of the Psalter. And in Lord's Day 39, question and answer 104, we're asked, what is God's will for us in the fifth commandment? We answer that I honor, love, and be loyal to my father and mother and all those in authority over me, that I obey and submit to them as is proper when they correct and punish me, and also that I be patient with their failings, for through them God chooses to rule us. Beloved children of our living and merciful God, we continue this afternoon to look at the commandments as a rule of gratitude as a means, as we've been saying, to show our thankfulness to God for what He has done for us. We are, as those who 
um, whom he has rescued from certain damnation in hell, we are now obligated to show our thankfulness in our changed lives. And so we seek to make every effort to do what is right and pleasing in the sight of our Savior God. And one of the ways that we can do this is simply by obeying God's command to recognize and to respect the authorities that He has placed over us. It pleases Him that we honor our father and our mother. It, in fact, brings glory to His name. The people of God are distinguished from the world when, when we render honor to those to whom it's due. It identifies us, we might say, as true believers when we honor our father and, and mother and all those in authority over us. And God's people have always understood that. A good example can be found during the time of the 16th century Reformation. The Christians, of course, we know were being persecuted by the Roman Catholic Church and in particular by the Roman Catholic King Philip II. And yet, at the time of the writing of the Belgic Confession, they realized that it was very important to them that the king understood that they were not rebels, that they were law-abiding citizens who simply desired to live as Christians as defined by the Bible. And they said as such in their introductory letter to the Belgic Confession, because the last thing they wanted was to dishonor God's name by being considered by the governing authorities as rebellious and disloyal to the king. Or think, for instance, the present times. The truth of this fifth commandment can be seen when we simply go with our children to the grocery store. And perhaps you've had it where someone co even comments at, at how well behaved your children are, how helpful little Johnny is, picking up that big bag of sugar for mom, or how nice little Susie is, making faces at the baby in the shopping cart so she won't cry, or putting her little pacifier back in her mouth, and this while the other children in the grocery store are just tearing up the place. And so what a way to show that we are God's children and cause people to praise Him by simply obeying our parents, boys and girls. Or think of the times in which we live, in which laws are passed which encourage immorality, or the as we mentioned in the congregational prayer, if you've been following the news, the selling of baby parts by plant, planned uh, parenthood and uh, the report that came out is ignored by mainstream media and by the governing authorities. What are we to do? How are we to respond as the church? We are to respectfully bring our concern to our uh, re representatives lest we dishonor God's name or take away from the glory of Christ. We are not as sadly has happened in the U.S., go on some kind of a shooting rampage uh, in, and, and uh, bring shame to the name of our God. And so we realize that this fifth commandment still applies to all of us, not only uh, as children to our parents, but even as adults, as young people in the workplace, in school, in public. The fifth commandment still applies to us that we respect all those in authority over us. God is pleased and he sees our thankfulness when we obey those he has given charge over us. Our theme then, as we look at the fifth commandment in Lord's Day 39 this afternoon, is this. Our Savior God calls us to thankful devotion in the fifth commandment. Our Savior God calls us to thankful devotion in the fifth commandment. We'll ask two, two questions. To whom does this extend? And in the second place, to what does this obligate us? But as our Savior God calls us to thankful devotion in the fifth commandment, we ask in the first place, to whom does this command extend? And the catechism, as it faithfully summarizes God's word for us, reminds us that this command is far-reaching, much more far-reaching in its implications than just uh, our uh, literal father and mother. It says it this way, I am to honor, love, and be loyal to not only my father and mother, but all those in authority over me. And we'll talk about these in a minute. But we want to make sure that our children get this, that this command comes first and foremost to you, to you, our covenant children. We heard in our scripture reading the command to children to obey your parents in the Lord. And we're reminded here, boys and girls, and children of all ages, in fact, that God is concerned that we act appropriately toward our parents. So he addresses us directly here. Notice that he doesn't say, parents, make sure that your children obey you. He addresses the children directly. He says, children, obey your parents. And he adds, your parents in the Lord. That is, 
Do it in the fear of the Lord, because you fear the Lord, because we worship the Lord our God, because we love the Lord, because we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. We, in turn, will obey our parents. Because we know that God gave us to our parents, we are to obey them. In Colossians 3, we hear the same command given, but a little clearer. It says, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. And notice what is well-pleasing to the Lord. When we obey our parents in all things, unless they tell you to do something that God clearly forbids in the Bible, we are always to obey our parents. We are to seek always to please them. We are to seek to be a blessing to them. We are to bring joy into their lives, not stress and not wrinkle lines and all the other things that we can cause for our parents, the gray hairs and all that. And so this commandment is still to be obeyed today by children of every age. And remember, boys and girls, that our Lord Jesus Christ never just gives a command. He also uh, sets the example for us. If you read Luke chapter 2, verse 51, you will read that Jesus himself subjected himself to his father and mother, even though he really desired to be about doing his father's business. Or think of John 19, verse 25 and following, where we read of Jesus providing a home for his mother Mary in the home of the apostle John, even as Jesus hung, dying on the cross. And all through his life, he showed himself to be the perfect covenant son, the second Adam and the greater Adam, in that he always desired to do his father's work with his heart and soul, so that his father could say of him, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And even in the anguish of the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, Father, not my will be done, but yours. And so Jesus set the example for us of obedience to those in authority over us. He fulfilled the fifth commandment. He loved both his earthly parents and his heavenly father perfectly, leaving an example of obedience for us. But the catechism also reminds us that this, commandment, this command extends to all those in authority over me because in the Bible, we have to realize that the, the catechism is not taking some license here and making the, the Bible say more than it really says, uh, the Bible, uh, or the catechism understand that the Bible um, the, teaches that uh, parenthood is not confined only to our natural fathers and mothers. few examples. Abraham, for instance, he is called the father of many nations. That is, he is the father of all of those who are justified by faith. Uh, Paul says in uh, Galatians 4, verse 29, if we are Christ's, we are Abraham's seed. Abraham is our father if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and we belong to him. Think of Deborah, the judge in the Old Testament. She was called a mother in Israel because of the work that God accomplished through her. The elders who sat at the gates in the, the towns of Israel and administered justice had a parental authority over the citizens of their town. Think of how David addressed King Saul as my father with that respect because he was king. And so applying the fifth commandment to all those in authority over us is not a new idea. It's not a novel idea. And neither is it abolished. Jesus, in fact, reminded the rich young ruler of the Old Testament command to honor mother and father if one aspires to eternal life. And Jesus himself paid taxes to Caesar. If you think about it, the king of kings paying tribute to an earthly ruler, and yet Jesus did it. And so the fifth commandment extends to other authorities as well. In the church, uh, there are office bearers. We hear the command in Hebrews 13, verse 17, to obey those who rule over you, that is the elders or overseers of the church, and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give an account. And so we are to honor, love, and be loyal to our spiritual fathers in the church as well. We heard in Ephesians 6, verse 5, the call to bond servants to be obedient to their masters. And today we would apply this to our employers. We are to honor, love, and be loyal to those for whom we work. Wives as well are commanded to submit to their own husbands as to the Lord. And by the way, men, 
Let's not forget, as we are often prone to do, let's not forget what comes right after. Husbands, love your wives. And so it's not, you know, we like to stop right there. W wives, submit to your husbands. But the more important verse comes after. Husbands, love your wives. Uh, and so this applies to wives as well. Um, anyone who teaches us, anyone who trains us, is to be respected because of the position they hold. Uh, we might think of Elisha in the Old Testament, calling Elijah my father because he was his apprentice, or Paul addressing Timothy as my son. Bottom line is, what ought to distinguish us from unbelievers is our Christ-like willingness to recognize, acknowledge, and obey all those who hold a position of authority over us in any and every situation. God gives this command to honor our fathers and mothers because obedience starts in the home. Respecting authority in school, in the church, in the workplace, in public, begins with the training we receive from our fathers and mothers, but it is to be lived out in every situation in which we find ourselves under authority. But as our Savior God calls us to thankful devotion in the fifth commandment, we also ask in the second place, to what does this obligate us? And so we're looking at the implications of this commandment. What exactly is involved in this command? How do we keep this command in our day-to-day -day living? Well, answer 104 begins with the reminder that we are to honor, love, and be loyal to our parents and all those in authority over us. But what does that mean exactly? Well, to honor simply means that we recognize the place of authority a person holds. We recognize the place of authority or the position of authority that a person holds, and we give them the respect that that position demands. And so um, in premarital counseling, I will say to the wives, when I address the, the future wives, I will say, you know, don't make fun of your husband's position in the home as head of the home. Don't, make, uh, don't belittle his headship. Don't try to take it away. Rather, encourage him in it. And so we are to respect the authorities that God places um, or, or that, uh, that God gives to someone. We're not to ridicule it, belittle it, or try to take it away in any way. We always respect uh, their decisions, say, of our parents, our bosses, uh, respect their rules. We listen to their advice. And no matter how old we get, we are still to respect and honor our parents. And we're to love them. Understanding that biblically, love is not just, you know, once a year buying mom some flowers on Mother's Day or getting your wife to buy dad a card because you suddenly remember it's his birthday. And by the way, if you're going to Costco and if they have a shirt on sale or a pack of uh, tube socks, you better get uh, something for, 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 for dad as well too. There's more to love um, than that. We're to show our affection in our behavior, our obedience, our words, the sacrifices we make for them. And to be loyal to those in authority simply means that we remain steadfast in our allegiance to them. We do not go against them, again, unless they command us to do what is contrary to God's Word. Now, what does honor, love, and loyalty look like in everyday life? Well, let's put it this way. It takes the form of common courtesy and respect. Common courtesy and respect. It means obeying them when they tell us to do something without backtalk and without them having to repeat something to us several times. You know, sometimes boys and girls, mom tells you, you know, go pick up your clothes from the floor, put them in the laundry hamper, and then she has to tell you four or five times. And every time, she adds a little bit more of a threat to it. Sometimes parents will even try to bribe their children. Well, if you do this, then, you know, I'll uh, take you for ice cream or you'll get whatever it is. Or sometimes there's that uh, counting to three thing that parents do with kids. Uh, you know, I'm counting to three now. One. You know, and they're looking at you, trying to get you to, 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 to do what they, what they told you, which you should have done instantly, immediately when the order was given. Um, being loyal and obeying um, and, and loving and, um, and obeying the, your parents means that you, you move and you obey them immediately. It means that we express appreciation to them as well. And so a simple thing like, Thank you, mom or dad, for what you have done for me. Um, it, it, it's something that should be part of our normal vocabulary. It's a way that we honor our mother and father in the home with common courtesy and respect. Honoring, loving, and being loyal to them means that we make it our goal to never pierce their hearts with sorrow 
or grieve them or cause them stress or worry. It means that we are always honest with them. When they ask us, so, so where are you going out? Uh, where are you going tonight? Well, nowhere. Uh, who are you going with? With no one. You know, uh, that's not honoring our fathers and our mothers when we, we, we're not honest with them about what we really are up to. We never deceive them. Um, you know, oh, I didn't call. You know, I was late for my, my curfew or whatever, um, but my cell phone died. I forgot to plug it in. You know, the, the little runaround that we try to give our parents, that's not keeping the fifth commandment. We always speak the truth to them. And we don't use underhanded, scheming ways to get them to do what we want. Like the old, um, well, Jamie's father said it was okay with him if it was okay with you. And in the meantime, Jamie is asking his father the same thing. Um, that's not honoring our fathers and our mothers. The fifth commandment also obligates us to obey and submit to those in authority over us as is proper when they correct and punish us. In other words, and of course there will be times, no matter how hard parents work with their children, there will be times when the, when the children try to push the, the boundaries, to bend the rules, and there will be consequences. And when there are consequences, we don't resent our parents for it. Why? Because God commands us to honor our mothers and our fathers always. Sometimes if we're still in the home, it may be a grounding um, sometimes it may mean losing certain privileges, the cell phone, the iPod, the Wii, uh, or if we're younger, it might, might mean if that's what uh, mom and dad practices in your home, uh, one or two loving wax on the behind with mom's faithful wooden spoon. Good and better, better on the behind, I say. Um, and what we have to, st to keep in mind always is what Paul writes in Romans 13, in Romans 13, verses 1 to 2, he writes, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, therefore whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. And so as hard as it may be sometimes to submit to authorities, this is what must drive us to obey anyway. God has established those authorities over us. Now, we have to realize when Paul wrote this command, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, of course, it was especially difficult to obey because the Romans ruled. And not only were the Romans foreigners, they were pagans, they were idolaters, and they were just plain mean. And yet the church was commanded to submit to them. Why? Because, Paul reminds them, no authority exists apart from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Those who rule and govern our country, even though they be godless. Those who maintain order in any way. Those who enforce rules and laws are God's appointed agents. In the church, we submit to the office bearers, and we respect their authority because... According to Ephesians 4, verse 11, Christ himself is the one who gave some to be pastors and teachers. Indeed, Christ has established every authority over us, and he himself rules his world through those he has appointed. And so, and this is the part we need to get very clearly, ultimately, when we disobey those who rule over us, we're rebelling against God himself. Ultimately, when we disobey those who rule over us, we're rebelling against God Himself. There may be times when we think that what we're called to do or expected to do or not do is unfair. It doesn't make sense. It's just lame. It's just a foolish rule. But we are to submit, understanding that ultimately we are submitting to Christ. And yes, sometimes those in authority make bad decisions, and yet Christ commands us to be patient with them and to maintain obedience and submission because even through those we might think are incompetent, God chooses to rule us. In the home, we are to respect the decisions of our parents even if we think those rules are old-fashioned and too restrictive. When we drive, we're to obey the speed limits and wear our seat belts. We're not to text and drive or eat burgers and fries while we're driving, respecting the distractive, uh, distracted uh, laws um, that we have now. Even though we may not agree with, with some of these laws, why? Because 
Those whom God has placed in power to rule over us have established these things as law. And if we, don't, uh, and if we do get a ticket, we don't roll our eyes at the policeman because Jesus' children are never disrespectful to authority. When we ride the school bus, boys and girls, we respect the, school dr the, the bus driver and we respect the crossing guard if there's one at school, close to school, as in Lacombe. Um, all of this is an included under the fifth commandment. When we go sledding, we're to obey the signs that tell us to stay on the trail, even though it might be more fun to go off the trail and there's no one around to catch us anyway. We're not to do that. Wherever we are, we are never to be rude. We're never to be discourteous. When we, when we think of what we travel today, we're required to obey laws that seem quite often silly and insulting. You know, take off your shoes, unbuckle your belt, put all your little toiletries in a little plastic bag. You know, all of these seem rather silly and insulting sometimes, and yet we have to do it because we are God's children. When our teacher calls us out, boys and girls, for disturbing others in class, we are to apologize and we're not to grumble and simply stop doing it. Don't keep on doing it to see if we can get more of a rise of our, out of our teacher. Now, before we end, let's listen again to verses 4 and 9 before we begin to wrap this up. Uh, in verse 4 of Ephesians 6, Paul says, And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. And in verse 9, he speaks to the masters. Uh, you masters do the same things to them, giving up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. And we want to be reminded here as well that God also has a word for those who are in authority. He commands us as parents and as employers not to provoke those who are under us to wrath. Well, how can we do that? Well, let me give you a few examples. Let's go straight to the point by calling them insulting names, by speaking to them with contempt. Now, we're talking to our, about our children here, how we speak to them, what we, uh, how we correct them. Our employees, for instance, how we, how we speak to them, how we correct them. We can call them insulting names, speaking to them with any kind of contempt, shouting at them, belittling them in any way, forcing them to do what their age or experience or strength restricts them from doing it. You know, the, uh, the rule of, you know, just get it done is not some magic formula. Uh, if they can't, they can't. We can provoke them to, to wrath um, by telling them how to live, but not setting the example before their eyes. You know the old saying, do as I say, not as I do? It doesn't really fly with the Lord. Uh, if we as parents tell our children not to live and not to behave in a certain way, then we need to set the example before their eyes. We can provoke those under us to, ang to, to wrath by breaking promises for frivolous reasons. You know, um, as our children get older, we say, okay, well, you can go so-and-so place or you can do such-and-such such thing. And when the time comes, we're just in a bad mood and, and we say to them, no, you can't do it, you can't uh, go here. Why? Well, I just changed my mind and because I said so. Or, you know, just go to your room because who are you to question me and, uh, and you don't, uh, you're not worthy of any explanation. These things provoke our children to wrath. If we favor one child or employee over another, we're, we are in turn causing them to break the fifth commandment because we are provoking them to wrath. Um, if we are being selfish um, uh, as, a, as a parent or as an employer um, and, uh, you know, our children or employee sees us, um, you know, splurging on ourselves, but yet they're asking for something, you know, your employee asks for a raise. No, you know, uh, times are hard, but yet you, never, you just brought a second Escalade, you know, um, not, uh, you're provoking them to anger in that way. What's the alternative? Be encouraging in your words, in your behavior, in your facial expressions, in your body language. Remember that your children and your employees are human beings. And they know what a sigh means when you do it. They know what you mean when you're shaking your head at them or kind of behind their back. They know when, what, 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 uh, what it means when you walk out of their office or um, uh, when they walk out of your office or out of, the, out of, your, um, out of your room and you slam the door. Uh, they know what those things mean. And so we are to correct with gentleness and respect and love. 
And especially as parents, we are to be faithful in teaching our children. It's not enough that we just bring our children to the baptismal font to have them baptized. We must teach them in word and deed what their baptism means. We are to, as Paul says, bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Think of our children as young plants that need to be tended so that they will grow up spiritually healthy and strong, and we in turn will then maintain their respect as they grow older. Congregation, our Savior God commands us to submit to all authorities that he has placed over us, and we do so out of thankfulness to him for his salvation. We respect rules, and we respect rulers. We give honor where honor is due, and so we show ourselves as those who have been renewed by the Spirit of Christ and being transformed into his image. And so let us walk in obedience to what those God has appointed over us for the glory of his name, and as evidence of his salvation, that it may be well with us, and we will live long on the earth. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the positions of authority that you give us. Thank you that we can be fathers and mothers in the home, and especially fathers having that position of headship, that heavy responsibility to uh, be a blessing to our wives and children and to guide them in the way of truth. Thank you that we could be uh, employers. Thank you that we can be in various positions as teachers, as elders, as deacons, um, uh, uh, even as teachers and uh, various other things. And yet, Father, we know that we can, um, we can take advantage of and misuse these positions, and we pray that you would guide us uh, that we may never provoke those under us to wrath. And we pray, Father, in light of the fifth commandment, that you would cause us all as children, as young people, as young adults, as, uh, as young family members, as uh, older ones, as Christians, that we would all respect the authorities that you have placed over us and that we would always seek to show our thankfulness to you by rendering honor to whom honor is due. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Number 95.